Kidi Uyosi Dr. Cherno Bari, the Vice Consular International Open University. Mungi Hamal Askan Bine, Gachela Purnu Bai Swin Laka, Dilaka Angale, Munenak Lul Donna Linga Hamne, Yenisi Tundi Africa, Lagina Buri, Dem Nasa Benga Hamne Faten and Lunu Don. It's a shame to keep calling lang English an uh, official language of your country when you don't even have one or two other national languages, you can call official too. Which other countries allowing only the, the, the English to be their national language? Which other country, apart from African countries? It's a shame. You go to China, oh, English is an official language, but Chinese is an official language. You go to Saudi Arabia, English is an official language, but Arabia, Arab is an official language. Their language of indigenous language is also an official language. You go to Tanzania today, the official language is Swahili. English comes number two. And in Africa, but this part of Africa, you also have to language English. Uh, you want to don't want to speak honey, the honey woman more more in Bukas have fun. You don't know how to read and write in your own language, the language in which you are born, the, you grow up to only know how to how to read blah blah black seed, uh, John Jack and Jill went up the hill. That's the only thing you know. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. And look, we have to be conscious of that. And honestly, it's only a laughing matter. We are still mentally enslaved. Believe me. Believe me. We have to, first of all, look inwards. Let us reflect on ourselves. You know, honestly. Okay, I'm sure most of our homes today, we are still, we have already adopted English culture, even unknowingly, because the fact is, we have been mentally colonized in that language. Unknowingly. I'm sure if you go to the Fana Fana home, they eat exactly like the Fana Fana. They eat Charendimba and all that. But today you go to some homes, they will, come, they will continue eating uh, fish and chips, uh, chicken and chips. They forgot the domoda and the chef and all the other things. Even bring that they say, You know, I mean, let us be honest to ourselves. We should be writing poetry in our national languages. South Korea was colonized, but it developed a national language which is Korean. And today they are giants in building technology today. Samsung, uh, Kia, Hyundai, you name it. They are now leading in technology. I had the privilege of going there and I know what I'm talking about. In fact, they, their teaching systems have advanced considerably. Education is a fundamental element of their development. Singapore has been given as an example. Today you go there, you speak their language as an official language. Malaysia, you speak their language. You go to Thailand, you speak their language. These countries are developing because the basis of development, the basis of development, the ingredient, the seed that grows development is the national language. There is no secret there. So there is no way Africa can develop as long as we are using our colonial master's languages to communicate. There is no way. There is no way we will be underdeveloped forever. We will only be free and liberated when we are free to speak our languages in any forum, when we are free to use our languages as our vehicle of development. We cannot develop indigenous science and technology using anybody's language. It's not possible. We have medicine, but we abandon the medicine and use important medicine. We have a lot of technology that is hidden here, but the guys who have it can only speak our indigenous language. They only understand indigenous, indigenous, indigenous uh, secrets. They cannot transmit that into a foreign language. Yet we sit around this table, some of us, and I have to say, are so proud to be the best English speaker. What you don't know is that you are already mentally colonized. You are mentally colonized. Because you speak English, you think English, you act English, you behave English, and you live English. You even dream English. Believe me. If you consistently speak English, as Honorable Jada said, you will leave English. You will, the clothes you wear, we reflect it. The food you eat, you reflect it. The way you eat, we reflect it. The way you behave with others, we reflect it. There is no way you can adopt English as your main lingua, language and you do not behave like they do. Why do you think most of these people are rushing to go to Italy and all that? Because we have been made to believe that our development, our salvation is by going to Italy. Is by going to Europe. That is a fallacy. How can we have all the wealth in Africa? 
all the wealth that should make us the richest continent in this world. And we all take these boats, kill ourselves, go there and get enslaved in refugee camps. Get enslaved because of our color of our skins and run the, uh, away from a continent that is supposed to give us the pride that we deserve. So I think the first problem to solve is to know whether really we deserve what we are today, whether we are truly independent. In fact, you cannot develop a language policy until you are convinced that it is the future of your country. Those who are going to develop it, those who are going to implement it, they must be the first to be convinced. I'm telling you, if you sit around this desk and you still believe that English is your, is your only form of communication, you are already, you shouldn't be here. You might as well just leave. Konak, na olof bi delu si nangadef, pol bi delu si kanala, sose bi delu si ibenyadi, serer bi delu si nafio, jola bi delu si kasumai. Sena bu juf, GTTV.